everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to walk you through a property survey and explain what it is, why it's important, and how to read it. So let's get into it. What is a property survey? A property survey identifies land boundaries and other restrictions and conditions that apply to a property. It allows you to see a property in its entirety and includes items such as property size, orientation, government right-of-ways, utilities, boundaries, and other possible encroachments and environmental issues. So why do we need a property survey? A property survey serves many purposes. For instance, when purchasing a house, most mortgage companies will require a survey. The reason they do this is to protect their investment. A survey will indicate restrictions and conditions that may affect the property's value. A survey may also be helpful if you plan to make future improvements to a property. For example, if you plan to build a fence, a pool, or an addition, the survey along with the local zoning code will allow city officials, architects, contractors, or other professionals to advise you accordingly. These professionals can offer you guidance, for instance, about how large of a pool you can build or if you can add an addition to the house. So how do we read a property survey? Today I'm going to go over an example of a survey for a single family new construction house. The survey will usually include an area that includes basic information about the property such as the lot number, the subdivision name, the phase number, the city and state the property is located in, and the date that the survey was performed. It may also include a legend that helps explain what certain markings on the drawing represent. So looking at the drawing, we start by locating the north arrow and we see that the arrow is pointing north, so north is this way. And one of the most important components of the survey is going to be your boundary and our property line. And in this example, it's highlighted in yellow to make it easy to read. So it's this yellow line all the way around so it helps you clearly identify what's inside your property versus what's outside your property. And this specific lot, it has a depth of 106 feet and a width of 93 and a half feet. And these are just the different lot numbers. So these are your adjacent lots over here. So let's zoom into the house itself. And that is represented by this solid line right here all the way around. And within that footprint of the house, we see that there's a text that reads one story frame building FF equals 12 and a half feet. Now that FF represents finished floor. The finished floor is the top of the foundation, whether that be concrete or timber, without taking into account any um, finishes. So the top of this, the, for this example, there's a concrete slab. So the top of the concrete slab is 12 and a half feet above the reference plane that in this case is sea level. So the top of the concrete slab of this house is 12 and a half feet above sea level. Now keep in mind that some surveyors around the country, they don't all use the same reference plane. So it may not always be based on sea level. And if you wanna look at the outside grade, so you can tell the difference between your inside and outside elevation. These numbers over here, the 11 and a half feet, these represent the outside grade. So you know that the top of your foundation is one foot above the existing outside grade. And the, your garage, the garage here, will be half a foot lower than the inside of the house. So now zooming back outside of the house, we see these dimensions that go all the way around from the footprint of the house to the property line. And keep in mind that some of these dimensions may be restricted by the local zoning code and your local zoning code will um, have some minimum setback requirements. And I'll go a little bit further into that in a different video, but that may affect future improvements you wish to make to the house, such as adding a pool or an addition. So that's something definitely that you want to keep in mind. Um, taking a look at other components of the survey, 
we can see these hatched in areas over here. These represent proposed concrete slabs. And when there is a something on the drawing that you quite don't understand what it is, always keep in mind there's this legend. So these circles with these dots, if we look at the legend, we see that it represents existing trees. So we know there's one, two, three existing trees on this lot. And these tags over here, let's zoom in so you can see better. So one and two, these represent the sewer lines. And four and three, these represent the water line right over here. And I think that covers it for this specific drawing. These little tags over here, as you can tell from the legend, these are the proposed grades. So these go all the way around the house. So in conclusion, be sure to always review a survey of the property you plan to purchase. And if you have any doubts about the information on it or need some help understanding what it's showing, reach out to somebody that can help you. If you need a survey of your existing property, you can usually find one by contacting your local city department, or you can hire a professional surveyor to perform a survey of the property. I hope this information is helpful. If you have any questions and or comments, please leave them down below, and please feel free to share any topics you would like me to cover on this channel. This is my first video ever on YouTube, so I plan to dedicate this channel to everything that has to do with architecture and city planning and sustainability, so I'll be covering a big range of topics. And so thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe if you would like to be notified of future videos.